Happy Saturday, Linda. Happy Saturday, Matthew. Back from QuickBooks Connect and time for a new question. This is a QuickBooks desktop one, right? Yeah, and it's, um, I'll take it because it's Big Bill from Florida, where I am right now. Uh, duplicate accounts, I need to delete one of them. And apparently he has a client who, hey, he's got a client, so he's an accountant probably. Manually entered transactions and also downloaded the same transactions using your bank feed. We've seen this before where they download them and then it can't see the bank account. So it says make a new bank account. So they make a new bank account. And now they've got new bank account and then they've got the transactions in twice because they've entered it in two and it's really the same bank account. So take us to your desktop and show us how to remove a bunch of transactions and an account basically. All right, so one of the things they talked about at the beginning of this was the fact it had the lightning bolt here, right? Yep. Um, which signifies that you've got an account connected with a bank feed or with the, you know, basically it's, it's linked to something. Yep. So, whenever you're importing transactions, if you're importing and you're trying to go into an account that's already got the lightning bolt on it, it will either, either it's already been linked to it once before and it'll pull the transactions in, or it's going to make you try to create a new account like you were just saying. So, yeah, I've, I've had it happen. In, when I've done desktop sometimes, I've had it happen where it's linked and it doesn't see it and I have to go in and edit and, do, and dis, disassociate the link from the bank and then, and then it will see it, you know, let you choose it. Yeah, so you edit, case, go to bank feeds, and, and you deactivate, deactivate online mm -hmm. services if that's what you're trying to do. Yep, and um, then it will see it again. Then it'll, it'll, it won't see it, but you'll be able to pick it to make it connected again. Correct. But yeah, but apparently they made a new bank account. So because the new account's already been created, it's basically a duplication. The, uh, what you're going to need to do, based on the fact that you've got the accountant version, go up to accountant, and you're going to batch delete void transactions. Okay, you have your transaction type here. Um, we've only put in just a couple transactions at this time. You'll see the account listed here, which is going to be an important thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can choose the period of time, and let's see if we can get it to. So, probably the best way to go about it is you're going to want to do the sorting by the account because you're going to have multiple accounts, most likely. So, you can then get into here, click off the ones that you need to remove. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you're going to review and delete these transactions. So it's basically saying, hey, you sure you want to do this? We're going to just, you can back up and delete. I'm going to just do delete only, but you should do back up and delete. Because you, yes. you uh, can't unring the bell. Exactly. So now we've basically deleted all of those transactions. Mm -hmm. This will show you the deleted ones, okay? then there's one other thing that can be done. Let's say you had an account, you had the two accounts, but you actually had some transactions in one and some in the other, you can actually merge the two accounts together as well. So there's an important aspect of this. So let's pretend that this Wells checking here, 1144, is actually supposed to be the same as the Chase checking 1234. Um, if we know, let's pretend also that the Chase is the long-standing account that has all the transactions and have already been reconciled in the past, right? And this Wells was the whoopsie account that we had. Mm -hmm. If you rename the second, the new account to match exactly the same as the first account, you can merge them together. Okay? So Chase checking, one, two, three, four save you'll get a pop-up here saying this is the kind of name exists do you want to merge yes if you do it this way any reconciliations that were on the wells account the second one you'll lose those reconciliations but any of them in the chase the initial one will be unaffected which is the point of it so now that wells account would be gone the Chase account exists still, okay, and is still, in a sense, linked and connected. So that's a way to merge pieces together, but you only want to do that once you know you've done the cleanup and you're kind of stitching the items all back together. So no duplicates that way. Right, and again, back up before you do any of this because you can always go back and restore and be back to where you were before. Exactly. So best way to get in with the accountant's version of QuickBooks Desktop 
go in, batch delete void transactions. Once you've done that and you've removed everything that you need to remove, you can either just delete the account completely or you can merge the two together, whatever's going to be best for your scenario. Um, and then probably want to take some time with the client to make sure they understand if they're going to import items. Mm -hmm. When this happens is if you import for different, different places or different, yeah, different places. So if you download a QBO file from your bank and you import that, that's going to be one method of importing and you're going to get your lightning bolt from the connection. But then say you did a second format, maybe it comes through a third party software like Ledger Sync or Vendor Sync. Um, if you pulled the transactions in from that, it would be a different QBO file and the unique identity number, you, excuse me, you, I, the, 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 unique ID <laughs> numbers would be a little bit different and it may actually try to pull them in a second time and it would actually try to ask you hey, what is, you know, it's going to ask you to, to do a new connection to a new account. So that's probably where you went wrong at the beginning. Right. And if, if it's this person, I know this person sounds like they have the accountant's copy, but if they don't, how are you going to get those transactions out of the checking account? The sad way. He made a sad face. Oh well, my God, what a sad uh, face. Why'd you have to go there? Um, the, then if the batch delete doesn't exist... You've got click, delete, <laughs> pop up, yes, pop up, yes. <laughs> That's four clicks. You must hate that. <laughs> uh, unless you start using like third-party applications, right. there are some applications where you can access it from the outside and then start to delete mm -hmm. items, but you're going to be spending money for those those tools. Yeah. Yep. So, I hope this was detailed enough. I hope this gave you some good feedback as to what you were looking for. But of course, if you need some more information, please feel free to reach out to either one of us. Um, and I will say, you know, if you're importing your transactions desktop, you should check out VendorSync. It'll help actually speed up the process and save you some time. Super fast. Yep. Linda, anything else to add? Nope, that was all I needed to say. <laughs> On that note, here's wishing you a very successful week. I know. <laughs>